Alright, in this video I'm going to show you how to become a web developer in 2024. My name is Christian and I help career changers just like you get into web development as fast as possible without any of the headaches that I had to go through years ago because frankly it sucks so let's get into the video. Now there are four to five steps that I want you to follow when it comes to getting this first developer job and making this career change, okay? The first one is to actually learn your basics. And the way you learn your basics is by figuring out the 20% that's gonna give you 80% of the results. By the way, I have a free course. Click on the second link in the description. I'm gonna walk you through those basics so you can learn all those things by yourself, free of charge. Not gonna charge you a dime for it, but I just want to explain to you why this is important, okay? You need to know your basics because without your basics, you won't be able to build stuff with any of these programming languages that you want to learn. So it doesn't matter if you are looking to learn JavaScript or PHP or Python or C++ or C Sharp. It doesn't matter. You still need to learn your basics. So the question in this case is what are the basics for web development? Well, the basics are HTML and CSS. And when I say basics, I want you to think about how can I learn the least amount of information so I can be as productive as possible. So here on the screen, you have this QR code that is still loading. And I want you to take your phone and then this is gonna take you to a Notion page, which is going to show you the minimum amount of tags that you need to learn to become proficient in HTML. And it's gonna show you the minimum amount of uh, CSS properties that will get you productive as fast as possible. So there are like 140 total HTML tags. In fact, you need 12 to build pretty much anything. And I think there are 500 or 400 CSS properties that you can learn, but in reality, you just need 15 or 20 to be able to build anything. So let me just show you some examples. This is a website made by a beginner from my program. Just a couple of tags, just a couple of CSS properties. This is week one, okay? After a month, you should be able to build something like this, okay? Same amount of tags, same amount of CSS properties. You don't need to know much, okay? You don't need to learn everything to become productive. Then when it comes to the actual programming part, because HTML and CSS are not programming languages, you need to know a few things when it comes to JavaScript. The first thing is to know your functions, your if statements, your variables, things of that nature. Then you need to know how to manipulate data, okay? In my free course, the one that I'm promoting right now, click the second link in the description to get into it, you will learn that pretty much every single thing that you see online is some sort of data structure. So if you've been learning from Udemy or from YouTube, probably you know about arrays and objects and you cannot really relate them to the real world. Like, okay, I understand I have a list of fruits, I have bananas, I have apples, oranges, whatever, but how do I apply those in the real world? How are they translating to the real world? How can I use them? And the reason why you cannot understand them is because you're not relating them to the real world. So let me just give you an example. I choose this video. So over, the past over here, what we have, it's an array, okay? An array of comments. Each comment is, in fact, each comment is, in fact, an object, okay? And then each reply here, it's an object that belongs to a replies array. So your main goal when it comes to learning JavaScript is to be able to relate the theory to the real world. Again, I'm gonna explain to you that in my free course and once you go to that free course, everything should click for you and you should be able to like understand how this works, okay? So once you learn, then you start building. So I have a few examples of like small applications that you have to start with because, you know, people make a huge mistake. They, they create a few small applications that uh, they've seen in a course or whatever, and then they put those in, your por in their portfolio. You don't do that. I mean, you shouldn't do that. Why? Because those applications are not complex. These applications like this one that I'm showing you here, they are just made for you to learn the basics, okay? Like manipulating the data or querying the DOM or creating DOM elements or deleting DOM elements and so on and so forth, okay? 
Now, another example of a small application that you can make is this one. So I don't know why the image is not showing up. Probably uh, it got deleted from the server. But as you can see here, this is all fake data. This is all about data manipulation. Again, in the second link in the description, you'll find the course that's gonna teach you how to do this. And this is very much the real world, okay? This is an Instagram post uh, replicated using objects and arrays and whatnot. This is gonna make you think in data. This is super important, okay? I really want you to understand this because I have spent so much time, you know, when I was learning how to code, when I was in your shoes, trying to learn everything and then I was never putting it into practice, okay? And then things never clicked for me, okay? Because I was in the theory world, I was in the La La Land. I don't want you to be in La La Land. Go in and apply for uh, that free course. Just press the button, join, and start working, start building, start creating projects so you can understand how things come together. Very important stuff. You'll go into learning something like React. You can learn Vue, you can learn Angular, it doesn't matter. In my opinion, you should learn React because it's the most popular library out there and it's gonna be way easier for you to get a job as a front-end developer if you know React versus Vue or Angular or Svelte or whatever other influencer is promoting, okay? Then, once you know that, we have this app called the Crypto App and we have uh, a Figma with uh, designs that you should follow. If you follow some designs like this, you should be able to create something that looks good Okay, and back in the day we used to, or I used to send people right into the job market just with this. Now I don't believe it's good anymore, so I added an extra step. But if you're not in my program, I understand that, but building an app like this uh, is definitely going to help you stand out compared with other people who are just, you know, putting Pomodoro apps, calculators and to-do apps in their portfolio. You're not going to stand out if you do that, okay? No matter what programming language you're choosing. Then you start preparing for interviews. I'm gonna give you some advice when it comes to this. Uh, I know there are so many ways to prepare for an interview. And the problem with interviews is that you never know what kind of interview will you get. You might prepare, I don't know, a few months uh, you might be grinding lead code, right? Algorithms. And the only type of interview you're getting is build me an app type of interview. Or you might be preparing yourself for build me an app and then all you get is a bunch of trivia questions like the difference between var, let and const or the difference between double equals and triple equals or tell me what is scope in JavaScript or tell me what is a closure. The problem is that you don't know exactly what you're gonna get, okay? so. Uh, to be on the safe side, what I'm going to recommend you to do, and obviously do your own research and see if my advice is right or wrong, I'm going to recommend you to prepare the trivia questions as much as possible. So just Google stuff like top 10 JavaScript interview questions or top 10 React interview questions or top 10 Node.js interview questions. Google something like that and then I just want you to be able to first of all regurgitate the answer right you should be able to regurgitate it no matter what and then second once you're able to regurgitate it try to understand the answer now whenever you have a trivia question like for example tell me what is scope in javascript you might have follow-up questions and you need to start thinking of, okay if i'm saying this what would the interviewer ask me right after this for example, it would ask me, okay, you said there are two types of scope, like global and local. Can you tell me what is the difference between global and local scope? Mm -hmm. Or can you tell me what are the two types of local scope? Can you tell me the difference between call, bind, and apply? Can you tell me what is this keyword in JavaScript? So you need to start thinking about, okay, I learned the main question. How can I learn the follow-up question? And I want you to start preparing when you start learning your first library, okay? So if you go into React or Vue or Angular or Svelte or whatever you decide to choose, start preparing your questions because you don't wanna prepare one or two days before the interview. You wanna be able to do this on a consistent basis, on, a, on an everyday kind of basis, maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes. You can get an app on your phone with flashcards or something like that, and then you can prepare those every single day because you will say, oh yeah, sure, this is gonna be easy, and then you'll fail it. 
How do I know this? Well, we have in my program four interview prep calls per week. And then all we do is we ask these basic questions and you'd be surprised how many people can actually answer these questions properly. When you feel like you built enough, okay? Whenever you feel like you've prepared enough for an interview, I want you to start hunting for an interview. You don't wanna start hunting when you are not ready because if you manage to get an interview for whatever reason, you will fail it and then your morale is gonna go down. You wanna start hunting for an interview when you feel like you are ready to get a job. If you feel like you have insecurities, like, oh, I don't know HTML and CSS properly, or I don't know Flexbox properly, or I, know, I don't know this thing about JavaScript, get a Google Doc and write down every single thing that you're not good at, okay? It might take you 30 minutes, maybe one hour. Write 50 things that you're not good at and then research those things and get better at them. You'll see how your insecurities will disappear and that's gonna give you confidence to go out there and start hunting, okay? To hunt or to get that job, you have multiple options and they are all working, okay? The first one is networking, which means you are actively reaching out to people via LinkedIn, via email, via cold call, via post, okay? You can figure out the address of a company, send them emails, uh, like a physical email, literally. Uh, you can connect with the CEO, with the CTO, with the software developers, with the HR on LinkedIn. You can send them a message, you can follow up with them. That works. You can also cold apply, that also works. You can cold apply and connect with the people that are working in that company that you apply to on LinkedIn and then you can message them from there. That also works. And then also, at the same time, I want you to maintain your coding skills. I've seen this many times with uh, bootcamp grads especially. Bootcamp grads, whenever they finish the bootcamp, they think they are ready to get a job. In fact, they are not, but they don't know that. So then what they do is, let's say they finish the coding bootcamp in 2021, and then they stop coding and they just apply to jobs and uh, try to hunt that first role because they think they're ready. And in the meantime, they lose their skills. They are not prepping for interviews properly. And if they manage to get an interview, they will fail it. You wanna be able to code every single day, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, because right now you are gonna hit an, ex an exponential curve where everything is gonna come together and you'll be able to build more complicated stuff. And that's gonna show that you actually know your stuff in a real interview. Another tip that I wanna give you here, uh, if you want to become a developer, when you'll get interviews, because you will get interviews if you follow this process, I want you to record the interviews that you have because the first few ones, maybe the first five, you will fail. Okay, that's kind of a given. But just failing them without learning anything from them, uh, it's kind of useless. So I want you to record the interview. Again, you can use an app like Loom or you can use OBS. And then right after the interview, I want to watch yourself, okay, the way you answer the questions. How do you come across? What do people feel like when they look at you? Did you answer this question correctly? Go and research what is the right answer to the question that you've been asked. I want you to do that because that's how you learn. Okay, that's what athletes do before a game. They watch enemies' previous games. They're trying to understand how the goalkeeper is going to uh, protect the, the ball from getting into the net and stuff like that, right? They watch their own moves. The boxers do that. They wanna see how they are, I don't know, punching, if they have like a weird mistake where they forget to bring their hand up and stuff like that. You are an athlete, a mind athlete, and you can use so many tools to improve yourself. You just need to be aware of the fact that you can improve yourself and then just do it whenever you have to do the thing, okay? That's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you like this video. This is what I will do to become a web developer in 2024. And on top of that, I would get a mentor like myself. So I have a great offer for you. If I don't get you job ready in nine months or less, I'm gonna give you all your money back and $5,000 for wasting your time. Click the first link in the description to learn more about that. If you like this video, like it. If you have anything to add on top of this, comment. And if you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.